Hello friends, so it's Oracle reading time. And before I jump into this week's Oracle, I just wanna go over something that I feel is important and I do it every once in a while, but it's been a little bit. So I wanna to touch on it again. And it's how I envision these Oracles because for me, I would hate to be doing this and to be catering to something that's against what I believe. And so for me, it's all about personal empowerment. It this I what I love to teach is for people to find their own way for people to understand that they have their own internal guidance system that they don't need to look outside of themselves to find that it's about using tools and finding tools in order to connect with that it's all within and we my big thing is to help people feel empowered to live the life that they were supposed to live because we just by the nature of everything going on in our world from birth to wherever we are in our lives we get conditioned and we get distracted and we then take on the life that other people we think that other people want us to live instead of what we were sent here to live so it's a lot of unlearning and relearning and so I would just hate for people to then look at these oracles as them telling you what to do that's not it you are telling you what to do the oracle is simply a tool so you how many people are watching this everyone will take away something slightly different and that's the magic in it is it will speak to you in the way that it needs to you are the driver's seat of this so like you with like Anybody watching this might take away something different or it might be completely way different from somebody else. And it's all perfect because there's going to be a part of the message that resonates with you where you are in your life right now. And then it can guide you using your own internal voice and your own internal truth into what the next right action might be. And sometimes the next right action might actually be what we call a mistake, but it's actually a learning thing. So it still brings you closer to truth as long as you're paying attention and as long as you're feeling into it. And so I just feel it's super important to talk about that right now because we are living in a world full of distractions, full of opinions, full of division. And I truly believe that if we could push pause on a lot of that, go within, we would all see that we're much more alike than we are different, that we all have the same basic needs um, for belonging, for connection, for purpose, um, and, and, and base rooted in love. And so it's these other things that get in the way. And so we then, in this culture that we're in right now, or in this whatever's going on, it's so easy to find ourselves not knowing what to believe because there's so much conflicting information out there and that can be hard and can be super confusing. And the reality is there's no one right way. It's all like what's true for you right now in this moment. That's That has to be our guiding system because if you're just doing something because you think you should, because maybe your friends or this group that you belong to, that's the way they would expect you to believe, then we're, st we're losing it. We're losing that, that touch with what's inside. And the more that we do that, then the more that we lose our true essence and the more robotic we become in this world. And that's, that's not what we're here for. We're not. And so we need to be empowered. We need to find our own way and now more than ever. And so that's what these oracles are about is about connecting with that. So it's not like this fortune telling type thing. That's not what I believe it can be. If that's what it is for you, then that's your truth, right? So I just think that that's, that's what it's all about is connecting to like that message, how is it working for you? How is it showing up in your life? And then being so intentional about, well, now what? You know, like, what is this? What message is this telling? How can I live a more empowered, passionate, purposeful life? And that's what these oracles are about. So it's not about disempowering anybody, it's about empowering you to connect with that deep truth within you that's always evolving, that's always present that is easy to get disconnected from, but that's what we're working on is coming back home to that. Okay, so this week I pulled from the Mystical Shaman Oracle deck and I pulled the card, the Sorcerer. Okay, so this is all about dark power and it represents that destructive aspect of 
our human psyche that we all have that we don't like to admit that we have but we don't we all have it so it's it's having us like take a look at our self-centered behavior that often harms others it can be conscious or unconscious that a lot of times we developed conditioning patterns it could be through trauma it could be through different messages that we get throughout our life that then have us acting in a certain way that's harmful to our selves and harmful to others. And so this is really an invitation to look at how our beliefs, uh, maybe around scarcity, around self-centered fear, and how that manifests and how it's impacting ourselves and others. And this is an important one, and this is a hard one, because it's so easy to hear something and they're talking about like how people are harming other people, and we then project and we might have somebody in our minds that like that's who they're talking about, that group of people or that person. And it's harder to see like ourselves in it. That's something I love about like in my yoga teacher training with Jackie Paulson at Be Yoga Studio was she really taught us about um, Hindu mythology and how in each story, that parable, that message that was so profound that we were each character in that because there's a part of us that could do each one of that. We have those tendencies in it. So there's no separation. And that's humbling and powerful because then all of a sudden it's not like we're looking down on other people. We're like, we understand I'm capable as a human being of doing some of those same things. And so that's really like the aspect of the sorcerer is we need to be able to look at that and accept it so that we can grow and not be so destructive in our own lives and in others. It's like that whole gener idea of generational trauma. Well, until somebody heals that by doing the hard work, then it, it, it does pass on. And we can all look at, see like, oh, I understand why that person would act that same or do those things or act out of those, act out those patterns based on trauma and yet they still have the responsibility. We all have the responsibility to heal it so that we can be more productive and helpful in this world. And so the sorcerer is asking us to do just that. So this is, it gets, it's kind of hard because it's part of our shadow that we don't like to admit. Like it's easier for us to admit the shadow aspects that were done out of, you know, somebody doing us, something to us. So, so the victim of another person, another situation. And yet we're also the victimizer in so many different ways. And those are the parts that we don't want to look at. So the sorcerer is look, asking us to do just that, is to look at part of our psyche that misuses power, that maybe harbors feelings of resentment, uh, maybe has some venge vengeance, hatred, bigotry, lust, greed, um, any of those dark things that we could be unconscious, but yet we're still acting on it. We have to make it conscious. We have to shine a light on it so that we can address it and move through it. And it's not having that destructive force in our lives. So we may have harmed groups of people or we may have harmed people in our lives. And we, we kind of turn off our awareness to that. And instead we might play the victim or they had, they had it coming type situation. And this is really asking us like no longer can we do that. It's not wanting, we can't play the victim anymore. Even if we were a victim, but if we're gonna keep perpetuating the hate or the harm, then then all of a sudden we become the perpetrator. And we. this is what's, you know, it's easy, it's, it's hard. It's easy to place that, place blame somewhere else, but this is the time to look at ourselves and to see, this is deep work, right? Like this is not, this whole journey home to ourselves it's uncomfortable, but it's so necessary. So this is one of those things where we can't blame other people um, for the darkness that lives inside of us. We have to work through it and make peace with it so that we can choose another way. We don't always have to be doing these things. The universe is very abundant and forgiving. And so we can be with that ourselves. So if there's parts of us that maybe you go through an awakening of some sorts with like, how maybe this is showing up in your world and how maybe you have been destructive to family members, groups of people, a person, whatever it might be, then there might be a period of like, almost like the grief process of anger, resentment, um, grief towards yourself and know that you're being held through that, that have grace for yourself because it's in all of us. We all have this. And the more that we deny that, the more that we, 
say that those are for people who have problems or um, we separate ourselves from the ask, the idea that that could happen within us, the more we actually are perpetuating the problem. And so when we are brave enough to take a look at what the sorcerer's message is, to look at those patterns, look at those beliefs, and to see where they might be showing up, and then shining a light on them and doing the work to release them, trust in the universe, if you pray to God, however it works for you, this is yours, then to release those so that we can show up more purely every day, heal those parts of ourselves, and to move forward in a way that we all want to. We all want to be a source of bright light in this world, to be, to live abundantly, and to share that with others. And so the more that we can do this, the more that we can be exactly that.